Hey everybody, this is Joshua Tucker, the tendonitis expert. And in this video, we're going to talk about shoulder bursitis. Specifically, on the topic of, is shoulder bursitis the problem, or is it just a symptom? And why that matters. So, we'll get back to the pretty pictures here, but what is shoulder bursitis? Technically, shoulder bursitis is an inflamed bursa. Okay, great, but... What does that tell you? It tells you your bursa is inflamed. Does it tell you how to fix it? No. Does it give you any insight as to the problem? No. And unfortunately, that leads into the second point here, which is what will doctors tell you about shoulder bursitis? Generally, that's exactly what they're going to say. They're going to say, well, you have an inflamed bursa, as if that's the problem. They think that's the problem. They might blame it on your sport or the activity you're doing or hobby or your job, but they never really ask why the bursa is inflamed. Oh, well, you play basketball, as if that's an answer to it. But a lot of people play basketball. They don't have inflamed bursa. The sport, the activity, is not the problem. So an inflamed bursa is a symptom of a much larger problem. And that gives you some access to doing something about it. Because if you just have an inflamed bursa, the doctor's going to say, well, we should do a, a corticosteroid injection, because that will lower the inflammation. And at best, it will. But all the factors that caused the inflamed bursa are still in place. So the inflammation is going to come back. Sure, everything's on a bell curve. Sometimes, great, you'll be fixed. But for how long is the question? And if it comes back, you were never really fixed in the first place. And that's generally how it works because an inflamed bursa is a symptom of a larger dynamic. So what's necessary to get out of pain? Because that's what you really want to know, right? How do you make the pain go away? Well, let's go back here. So obviously you know that underneath the surface of your skin, there's a lot of muscles and ultimately they're attached to bones. Great. We know that. The layer in between bone and muscle, bigger muscle, is you have smaller muscles. And this right here is usually what gets the attention. It's tendonitis, shoulder cuff tendonitis, rotator cuff tendonitis, shoulder tendonitis, whatever you want to call it. It generally looks something like you have some inflammation and or some pain on a tendon. But even that is just a symptom of a much bigger dynamic. If you have pain right here, right here is not the problem. The whole area is the problem. A little too many lines there. The point I'm trying to make is same thing with a bursa. The bursa, and this is not a highly accurate drawing here, but essentially the bursa sits right here. It's kind of sort of a fluid filled sac and it sort of acts as a friction reducer. You have supraspinatus kind of underneath and touching on the side. You have deltoid coming up here. You have ligament that wraps across here, kind of on top of the bursa. And the arm, as you know, rotates in a variety of different directions. That's an arrow like that. Oops. And up and down, of course. All that is causing movement right there on the bursa. Friction is happening. This is about to get a little messy because you can see with these muscles here, the muscles attaches to the bone and it's pulling that way. And this muscle is pulling that way. And this muscle is pulling this way, the supraspinatus. And the deltoids are pulling this way. You can see that that makes compressive forces. The shoulder is getting compressed. There's supposed to be some room all in here for things to float around, but as things get tight, as they get compressed, it all gets squished, like you're squeezing a sponge. It all gets compressed. Let me take a moment and remove these lines. So as that compression happens, there's more force on the bursa. Kind of like those blow up big rubber balls you sit on for workouts. It compresses and you roll around on it. Same kind of things happening with a bursa. But it's not really happy with that, and eventually it gets inflamed. So sure, you can get a cortico corticosteroid injection right there, and that might get rid of the inflammation, but it doesn't get rid of all the compression. It doesn't get rid of all the tight muscles that are causing compression. So if you want to get rid of, if you want to fix the inflamed bursa dynamic, then you have to get rid of the tightness. And that falls under the tendonitis dynamic, which essentially is made up of three factors muscle and connective tissue tightness, inflammation, 
and nutritional insufficiency. Those three factors all work together to cause tightness and to keep things tight. And when things are tight, the bursa is going to get irritated and inflamed. And bursas, by nature, are just extra stubborn and extra painful, very irritable. So that's what you need to do to fix it. Well, that's the simple version of how to do to fix it. There are, of course, there is, of course, a larger conversation of how exactly to do that. But that's what you need to do, and that's what you need to deal with. If you'd like to find out more information about shoulder bursitis, visit my website. It's linked below. And of course, as always, the solution to shoulder bursitis is get is to fix the shoulder tendonitis dynamic, and that's dealt with in the reversing shoulder tendonitis program.